Hi there. My name is Robert Hart, and I'm a Sitecore Technology MVP from the Netherlands. With the introduction of Sitecore 10, Sitecore has fully embraced containerization and .NET Core headless development. Previously, they, of course, already supported headless development through Sitecore JSS. The Sitecore headless development splits up a uh, Sitecore project up into a separate Sitecore instance and a separate rendering host, as you can see here in the diagram. The rendering host will serve as the front end uh, of your website, while the Sitecore instance will run as the back end of your website. This decoupling makes the Sitecore solution easy to develop, maintain, scale, and upgrade. Sitecore provides a getting started template for Sitecore developers that allows you to quickly try out Sitecore headless development with ASP.NET Core and Sitecore containers, such as Docker. It can be used to get you uh, started quickly or to kickstart new customer projects. In this video, I would like to run you through the process of how easy it is to get started with Sitecore headless development. So here we are at uh, doc.sitecore.com, which is the documentation site for Sitecore. Let's go to developers and IT pros, and then scroll a little bit down to developing with Sitecore and the getting started template. Let's open that up. So here you can actually find the walkthrough of uh, the getting started. Uh, template. This getting started template will walk you uh, through the installing the prerequisites, uh, in the end, installing the .NET Core uh, template uh, that will allow you to create this uh, uh, Sitecore headless development uh, solution. And then we're going to uh, run that uh, solution uh, onto a Sitecore instance. So let's uh, first uh, check out what the uh, prerequisites uh, are. So we need uh, uh, .NET Core 3.1, uh, the SDK installed, uh, the .NET Framework 4.8, uh, uh, Visual Studio 2019. Uh, you need to install Docker for Windows Server first and make sure to actually switch the, the flip from uh, uh, Linux containers to Windows containers and uh, have PowerShell. Uh, installed. So with a PowerShell uh, open uh, in admin uh, mode, uh, let's run the following command. Let's, uh, let's copy this and I'm going to switch and let's paste it in and just uh, run this command. So this will install a .NET Core uh, template. Uh, as you can see here, now it's installed, this Sitecore simple container based HP.NET Core solution. Uh, if you want to uninstall this, then uh, because basically if we scroll up, we, we just installed it uh, with this name. So if you want to uninstall this, if you don't want to have this uh, template anymore available uh, to you, uh, you could always do .NET uh, new dash u from uh, uninstall and then uh, basically sitecore.devx.template. So sitecore.devx, maybe with a capital E, devx.templates. Uh, now you can actually just uh, be .NET new dash dash list in order to see if it's gone. So not, now it's gone. So if I, reinstall this again now it's going to uh, install it again and i have it installed so now that we have the template installed let's uh, go uh, to the next step which is create uh, a uh, project uh, to create a uh, project solution um, and it doesn't really matter uh, if, what name you, you, you give it, uh, you can actually uh, already start creating a .NET Core uh, Sitecore headless development solution uh, for your customer if you, if you want to. Uh, there are specific things that certain ports need to be uh, uh, available uh, for, uh, for Docker to run. So uh, you have to make sure that all the sites in the IS are uh, stopped. So that's uh, let's run, let's run this is reset, uh, uh, slash stop. So let's run it here. Um, okay. IS reset stop. Making sure that every site is stopped that you, uh, 
that you have uh, available uh, in IAS. And let's see uh, if uh, Apache Solar is running uh, on, uh, on a certain port, 8984. Uh, we already have a, a process uh, running there. So let's copy this and let's see if there's something running there. And as you can see, I'm already running a version of, uh, of, of Solar on, uh, on this port. Uh, in my case, that's probably for Psycho 9.3. Uh, so I'm going to um, stop the service with a specific uh, name of the service. Um, I know this by half, so, uh, so this is, in my case, it's Solar 8.1.1. Let's uh, let's uh, let's stop that uh, service, and now we can actually uh, um, create a new. Uh, it, it will create a new uh, folder for your uh, project uh, based upon this uh, this new template. So let's copy this up. Let's copy this over. I mean, and let's paste it in. And I'm going to. Since my company is called Kaye, I'm going to say let's make a solution for uh, for uh, my own brand, uh, which is called Kaye, and let's make a uh, Sitecore headless development uh, solution for that. So now it's going to, uh, as you can see, it's going to uh, create a uh, project uh, and a solution in in the Kaye folder. So. Uh, so do we want to restore the tools for the solution? Yes, of course, we want to do that. So the command succeeded. And let's go into, into this folder. And here you can actually uh, see what it, uh, what it installed. It installed this uh, uh, Kaye solution. Uh, it configured. Um, <clears throat> we have a source folder here. We have a special Docker folder here. Um, so, and I'm going to uh, continue with uh, reading up on the instructions. Uh, so, uh, I'm currently, uh, I went into uh, that folder and now uh, you use the provided uh, init.powershell script to prepare the following items for the Sitecore container uh, environment. So, we'll install this uh, wildcard certificate, host file entries. Uh, okay, so. In order to prepare the Sitecore container environment, we need to run this script. We need a Sitecore license, uh, which I just copied into uh, that specific folder that I created, which is my uh, Kaye folder. Um, so let's let's copy this over, and let's then adjust that in uh, in PowerShell uh, the path to my license file, which is the the current folder that I'm running the init script in. So what I did was uh, I copied over my Sitecore license file already into, uh, into this uh, Kaye uh, directory. Uh, and now I'm going to paste in that uh, init uh, command and I'm going to adjust this path to your license uh, XML file. Since I copied it into uh, my current directory, I can actually use the dot um, and then the license. Oh, it needs to be a backslash license.xml and I'm going to give it a password of B. So now it's going to prepare my Psycho container environment installing the Psycho Docker tools. Um, you're installing the modules from untrusted repository. Yes to all. So now it's importing the Cycle Docker tools. It's downloading uh, um, tools to do uh, certifications. Uh, yes, I want to install it. Uh, it's adding my Windows host file entries for my Kaye. Uh, um, that load, so it won't match. It's going to in install a wildcard uh, certificate apparently uh, on my machine and it's populating the required uh, environment file uh, values and, uh, and it's done. So 
Out of the box, this example does not include a reference to the environment file and the get ignore file. Well, the, you can you can read this uh, yourself. Uh, step seven: download the Docker images and install the containers. So now we need to run up uh, the up PowerShell and the template creates the following entries in the Windows host file. In my case, it was uh, called Kaye. So we have an identity server, like a, a CM server, and uh, and probably this is the CD server. Um, uh, this is actually the rendering uh, host, of course. So uh, this actually points to the to the rendering host, which, which is the the front end of your uh, of your website. So then here you can really see the decoupling uh, uh, between the rendering host and the uh, sidecore instance. Uh, so let's uh, let's run uh, this uh, script. So now it's building the containers. Um, as you can see here, uh, traffic. Uh, Traffic is used, which is, uh, I think it's a remote proxy. I have to investigate that. Uh, so it's downloading all these things, uh, pulling .NET Core APIs, creating images, uh, and spinning up the uh, Sidecore instance. So as you can see here, it's downloading uh, some huge files. Apparently here, uh, these images, it's 1.2 uh, gigabytes. Uh, well, I won't bother you with this whole process, so I'm going to uh, uh, skip this uh, process a little bit and uh, let's wait until it's uh, finished. Hi, yeah, so it can happen that you're running into this uh, firewall uh, issue that the remote name could not be resolved uh, to go to uh, nougat.org. Uh, luckily, there's already a, a, a Sidecore Stack Exchange uh, thread on this, where somebody was exactly doing the, the getting started uh, template uh, overview. You exactly got the same, uh, the same error as I did. So let's scroll all the way down to the bottom because I've tried a couple of these things, but they don't work. Uh, the, the thing is that uh, sometimes Docker's internet connectivity won't be working uh, properly. So which can lead to a number of uh, errors, which we're seeing in the PowerShell uh, uh, console window. And uh, we have to, uh, Try to run and resolving the, the google.com uh, domain as is specified here uh, in this uh, uh, thread. So we're going to uh, copy this over. DNS uh, with that 888. And let's open up um, Docker. So let's go to Docker settings and let's go to the Docker engine and press a comma and just paste that in here. Click apply and restart. And that's it. So thanks as well to uh, Bart Plasmeyer uh, for uh, uh, leading me uh, uh, through this. So you can actually now close your uh, Docker engine, go back into PowerShell and then run up again. And now it's able to actually uh, you don't get any uh, firewall issues anymore and uh, uh, let's continue with this and I'll, this will probably take a lo longer time to, to get all the images uh, and uh, build all the containers and spin up the CM environment, uh, the, rendering, uh, uh, the rendering host. So probably going to scroll and uh, see you in a bit. So as you can see, uh, identity server uh, has come up. So now we need to uh, uh, authorize here and allow 
the uh, application uh, Psycho API to give the, them the, the permissions and the necessary permissions. So let's allow. And as you can see here, now we have been logged in and uh, the latest uh, items will be pushed to Sitecore. So uh, you're probably using uh, uh, the new uh, Sitecore serialization uh, uh, for that. So let's wait until uh, so the CM server uh, was up. And now all we uh, need to uh, do is that the rendering host uh, will be uh, will be loaded. So as you can see here, Sitecore has uh, the the front end has loaded uh, on this tab. Identity identity servers loading and. Now we need to once more authenticate, or maybe it still uh, uh, still remembers it and it logs it in into uh, the CM. So with this getting started template, you can easily see um, how to get a, a headless uh, .NET Core, uh, ASP .NET Core headless development uh, with with Sitecore and have that installed. And that was it, uh, as I said. So uh, identity server was opened up. Uh, we logged in. We accepted the device uh, authorization, and we waited for the content management and the rendering house uh, site to actually uh, come up. So probably in the next video, I'm going to uh, uh, yeah run through the solution and see uh, what we can tell about that. Uh, also Docker, um, what images, uh, what containers are up and running. Uh, yeah, tell you something uh, more on that. So uh, thanks for watching and uh, see you next time.